<laughs> no means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no, all right? But no, stop it, what are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad, stop it. No. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me, so I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people, right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Uh, your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you're just sitting there like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. So, I'm sick of Obama's wife. <laughs> yeah. This isn't some Republican rant either. It's just kind of first ladies in general. You know, I don't know what it is. All throughout my life, with each presidency, like these first ladies, they've just gotten more and more like, like, uh, like chatty. You know? More and more chiming in, like leaning into the frame, <laughs> spitting out their ideas. It's just like, well, why are you talking? Right? You weren't elected. Shut up. Your husband's not running a lemonade stand here. He's running the country. You don't just chime in. Let me guess, is this considered sexist? It is? Why? Well, okay, you just nodded there, lady. Let me ask you this, all right? Let's say you had a leak in your house, okay? You call a plumber up, he shows up. And he goes, yeah, I think the leak's coming from the upstairs bathroom. We need to shut it up, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, his wife walks in, who isn't a plumber? <laughs> and then goes, hey, you know, I'm actually thinking it's kind of pretty nice. Hey, wouldn't you be like, with all due respect, shut the f up. I need a plumber in this moment. I'll extend an olive branch here. All right, at some point, there's going to be the first female president, right? Exactly. Which means at that moment, you're going to have the first male first lady, right? <laughs> and when that happens, that dude needs to shut his trap. I don't want to hear a word out of him. I want to hear from the president. You, sir, go do some first lady stuff, all right? <laughs> go get yourself some gloves that go up to your elbows. <laughs> Smile and nod during speeches. Go put your own flair redecorating the White House, all right? Which leads you to Michelle Obama, right? Now she's sitting there holding up those hashtags. Remember that hashtag, bring back our girls? Remember that? It's like, I, it blew my mind. It's like, why are you showing me that? I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, what am I gonna do to get those girls back? Why don't you look across the dinner table? It's like, you see that guy? <laughs> that is the leader of the free world. Tell him to pick up a phone. Call some Navy SEALs and solve it. What, what am I gonna do? <laughs> Show up with a sharpened mic stand? Oh, Michelle said to bring him back! <laughs> so let's talk, uh, let's talk white women here, shall we? <laughs> let's talk white women. White women, you're amazing. Amazing your accomplishments over the last few years. I gotta tell you, the way white women somehow hijack the woke movement Generals around the world should be analyzing this. <laughs> Just to refresh your memory, the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color, not getting opportunities, the at-bats that they deserved, finally making that happen. And it was about that for about eight seconds. <laughs> and then somehow, white women swung their Gucci-booted feet <laughs> over the fence of oppression <laughs> and stuck themselves at the front of the line. I don't know how they did it. I've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women. My name is so hard eh, with my SUV and my heated seats. You have no idea what it's like to be me. Trash and white guys, the nerve. Where's the camera? The nerve of you white women. Let me, I, listen, I don't want to speak ill on my bitches here, okay? I don't, but let's, let's go back in history here, okay? You guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around in the blood muddy, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with a black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, 
That's what you did. That's what you did. So why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will get married, you know. I was making that. I'll definitely get married someday, you know. I, de you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not, like, compatible with them. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ever just feel that? Like, women have, like, too much energy for me. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day. They're like, oh, my God, let's go fill it up with shit. <laughs> no, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your T-shirts? This is the worst one. Ever get this one? You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside, you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that, right? You gotta keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you think it. Now nah, you think it. Then we can sit around to listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. Like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. I thought it was pesto. Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? It's horrendous. I'm trying to learn to pick my battles when I date girls. I usually argue with women all the time, man. I'm stupid like that, you know? Like, I dated this girl one time. She was, like, really into, like, women's issues. So we used to always have these dumbass arguments. Like, one time she came up to me and she goes, okay, explain this to me, Bill. Why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job, huh? Hmm? Hmm? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I get the dollar more an hour. No, think about it. If there's a house fire, it's always women and children first. I gotta stand there with like the back of my shirt on fire going, let's go people, let's go, let's go. So that's how I look at it. No, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. That if something fucked up happens, either I can't leave or I gotta like get in the way of it to give you a head start, like rabbit dog, run honey, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You hear a bump in the night, I gotta go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for first? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? <laughs> Bullets hurt me too. Why the fuck do I gotta stay in the vault? <laughs> no, that's my point, man. Where are all the feminists in those situations? You know what I mean? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. That's a, that's a guarantee. You could take the most hardcore feminist, some chick right in your face, like, he's showing a sick time of a bitch. Little short, little haircut, the whole nine yards, right? <laughs> Second those flames break out, she's gonna twist those little hairs into pigtails. Ooh, I'm just a girl. I wanna go play jump rope. And leave you standing in a burning house like you're not flammable. You know, but I'm not, I'm not a dick, though. I'm not, I'm not saying I think a woman should make a dollar less an hour to do the same job. All I'm saying is if you're going to make what I make when the boat sinks, you better be standing right there next to me, listening to that guy play the cello. <laughs> then you get the corner office. You get all the benefits or whatever. I was going back and forth with somebody um, this morning, an East Coast friend of mine, who I hadn't talked to in a while. How you enjoy being a dad and blah, 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 blah. And then she hits me up with the whole, hey, I'm turning 50 this year. I am not happy about it. I said, yeah, I turned 50 last year. She goes, how was turning 50 for you? You know, she goes, you're a guy. You probably don't care. It's much harder for a woman, especially with our careers. Oh, did I have fun with that? You know, <laughs> I just wrote back, well, 
Jesus fucking Christ. You know what I mean? White women complaining is one of the funniest. It's like you got a fucking house and a beautiful family. What is the fucking... Pr- it's so much harder for me. You're going to outlive me by six to eight years. So me turning 50 is like me turning like 56, 57, 58. You don't hear me complaining, you know? You never hear me complain on this podcast. This is nothing but positivity, rainbows and fucking unicorns. Um, yeah, I love that shit. It's harder, for, it's harder for women to go to the gym. It's harder for us to lose weight. Well, then fucking work harder. You know? Everybody's different. Oh, is that where it's harder? You know what's, you know what's harder for me? Uh, uh, trying to get some woman to pay the cover charge and buy me drinks. You know, it's harder for me to divorce court. Uh, outliving you. I mean, it, 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 it balances out, ladies. Getting child support. Yeah, that's harder for me because I'll be the one paying it. And all of a sudden it costs 900 grand a month to raise a fucking two-year-old, right? I, I just don't understand the constant complaining by white women. Okay, you're white. You live in America. Shut up. Okay, wait till the other problems are solved. <laughs> We'll get to you. You're at the meat counter. Your number isn't up yet. Wait your turn. All right? Wait your turn, Abigail. Do you know how much harder? It's so much easier for you to go to jail. It's not easier. Men's lives are harder because we have to live with you guys. <laughs> oh, man. I want to become friends with a lesbian couple, and I want to, like, be friends with, like, the the... the the chick in the relationship that's got to handle more of the dude shit, you know, because, you know, opposites attract. And I would think even like in the lesbian community, there's going to be somebody, you know, who's out there swinging the axe, getting the fucking firewood while the other one's in there making the muffins. That's the lesbian I want to talk to right into my podcast, please. You know, I want to know if, if those lesbians on average die sooner than 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 the the, the dainty lesbian, you know. The lesbian who's got to go out on the fucking roof and adjust the fucking direct TV satellite fucking thing <laughs> in the middle of the fucking rain. That's who I want to that's who I want to hear from. That's the study I would be doing. <laughs>